Welcome back to the Token Talks podcast. Today, I am joined by my friend and former colleague, Josh Cottle. Josh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Thank man. you so much for joining me. Um, so I'm, <laughs> I've known Josh for a minute now. It's been a number of years. I don't know how many. Uh, give or take eight, seven years, yeah. possibly, maybe longer, give or take. So I wanted Josh to come on to the podcast and kind of talk about what he does job-wise, what he does in his personal life, and anything mm-hmm. else that comes to mind that he, th- he thinks would be inspirational for you guys. Um, so Josh, go ahead and introduce yourself to the people at home and then kind of give us a background of how you got into fitness, how you got into personal training, becoming a business owner, um, and then anything else. Cool, man. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, thanks for having me once again. Um, my journey started back, obviously, competed collegiately at University of Texas San Antonio back in 2001. Yes, many, many moons ago. And then obviously transferred to the University of Texas Permian Basin, completed my eligibility there. And then um, I was blessed from above. I became the head coach at a very ripe age at 22 years old. 22 years old at, for a program in itself that was fairly young, I think three years in the making, I believe, I took over. Had a successful nine years there. But then after about nine years, decided to move out here to um, the DFW airport, or excuse me, airport, DFW area, <laughs> hello, DFW, I go to the airport a lot, by the way, on the weekends, okay, um, truth be told, that those of you know me, <laughs> um, anyway, so moved out to the DFW area, and uh, it was truly a blessing, and since I've been personal training since I was head coaching, because, you know, as head coach, especially track and field, you don't really make a lot of money, let's completely be honest about that, um, and that's where it happened about 20 years ago, starting with some private clients there at the university, and then kind of continuing my education with that personal training, strength conditioning, and also teaching six classes and coaching. It was a lot on the plate. Coming out of the GFW area, I was able to really concentrate on just as, started with Luke's Locker, where I know your father, by the way, great man, by the way, um, and started to build my clientele. So I would be working from, you know, 4 a.m. till about 11 a.m. at the shoot, or excuse me, at the gym, a gym called Impact here in South Lake, Texas. And then I'd work at Luke's Locker for about 12 to seven. Did that for about nine months before I finally saved up a couple of bucks, so to speak, and uh, went into personal training. And then here we are, 10 years in the area, and I have my own gym, which is called O Fitness. And um, every day, it's not work. It's love what you do, do what you love, and to wake up every day at 4 o'clock in the morning. Some days, let's be honest, it's tough, but the majority of the time, I truly enjoy helping. I, right now, I've focused my attention to the 30 and above, and I still have a younger clients. I still want to help out. I just have a couple of the kids reach out to me about track and field. Obviously, that's my forte, but as far as expanding my horizon, so to speak, and just help out anyone else coming in, I'm not necessarily focused on too much on how they look. It's how they feel, and that's been my go-to, man. It's been so far so good, knock on wood. So we were talking before we started rolling um, about how you got into personal training. Yep. Uh, so go ahead and share with them the story about how you got introduced and kind of the, the ball started rolling as far as personal training goes. Absolutely. It happened, I remember it was in season cross country, obviously the fall for those who don't know. And uh, there was a body, named by Mr. Bobby Burns out there in Midland. He was the former mayor of Midland and um, literally came to my office one evening, pretty late. I remember it was probably seven, eight o'clock at night. I'll never forget this. Walks in, was pretty upfront, said, hey, I heard about you, I want you to train me. Of course, I took a step back. Well, not necessarily knowing the personal training, as, again, I was 22. So did a little research, went out there and got my CSCS, which is which is a strength conditioning specialist. And then from there, the ball just kept rolling. Like I said previously, that became my little side hustle in the evening, or especially during the summer, or during the December months, as you know this, you don't really have a lot going on in college especially coaching if you weren't recruiting. And then you had certain dead periods, quiet periods and so forth like that. But that's how it really took off. And I started to be, you know, started to obtain clientele. And here we are 20 years later, still doing it, still loving it. I like how you said it's not a job. It's something that you really truly enjoy doing. Yeah. Um, and like you obviously work out and train with your wife, Jess. I do, I do, yeah. And that's truly, truly a blessing. You know, I remember when I was younger, probably, Brown college time, but you know, I've always wanted to work out. I hope I find a wife that likes to work out or slash run or something of that nature. It doesn't always happen that way, but I do. My wife, Jessica Caldill, she's she's my little rock. She's my go to. There are those days where, like, oh, I'm not really feeling that, but she'll kind of look at me like, let's go. But you know, and vice versa, because she, don't get me wrong, she has her moments too, like, oh, like, let's go. But it's, it's a great combination. If you, can get, if you can obtain that in life, truly a blessing. What would you, are you guys considered like a uh, power couple, so to speak? Like you guys push each other in the gym um, and then push each other outside, obviously, as well. Like you're there for one another when one falls down, you pick the other one back up. 
I'd I say, um, yeah, you know, I've never really thought about that, but you're right, because I've never, hey, babe, you're picking me, but no, you're right. We, we do help each other out. Uh, as of right now, she's training for an event called High Rocks, coming to November 2025, excuse me, February 2025. And uh, as far as being able to coach her, but at the same time, and just kind of being there as a support the whole time, it, it's, it's fun. It really is just fun. And it's not so, not the, we, there are those moments, I think Coach Caldell does come out, like, come on, let's go, in certain aspects of the runs or her speed or whatever's going on in her program, for sure, so. How, how did you guys meet? If you don't mind sharing the back not story at all. Not of at all. how. I, I used to get a, my hair cut at this place down in South Lake, and she was the manager there of a uh, the salon, and going every day for my haircut. I used to get a haircut every Friday. I was that guy. <laughs> and then one day she surprised me. She's like, she was surprised me by remembering my name, number one. But number two, I'd always get a pillow of green water. And I remember one day, the rest of history, she slides the pillow of green water towards me. She's like, here's a pillow of green water. I was like, oh, you remember. And here we are married. Um, two years and counting and been together for six years. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it wasn't always peaches and cream as, as every relationship, you know, but here we are, so. What would you say has been the best part about married life for you personally? Or what's something that st stands out from the rest, whether it be funny or like really heartwarming? Honestly, uh, when you find your best friend, you're able to marry your best friend. That's the best thing. But. I think for us was a true testament of marriage or if you will love or whatever you want to call this but I was in a really bad accident last year where I wasn't able to walk for about seven months and that really pushed limits. I went from working out every day and running every day to doing nothing for about five months before I was released to even do any type of any type of PT and that was that was strenuous on us on, us, on her on me everything even even my business was kind of taking a toll a little bit because I just wasn't I wasn't able to produce myself you know, who I am naturally I, I like to consider myself pretty happy going but during that difficult time well, while we were married and we just celebrated our one-year anniversary at that but boy was it tough but we made it and if anything we can kind of look at that difficult time and look at each other and tell other people too we made it and if we can go through that well, I, I think we can go through anything because you know marriage is Marriages work. We have our moments too, but we don't agree. We don't can't agree on the bread one day or agree on the milk or stuff like that. But jokes aside, um, going back to your question, it's great when you marry your best friend. All in synopsis. What um, what advice would you give to somebody watching this? Whether it be like somebody who wants to be an entrepreneur, a business owner, especially in the fitness and um, health industry. What advice would you give to them since you've been um, doing it now for so long? Uh, great question. And somebody told me this on a run. I'll never forget this. Um, a guy by the name of Mike Pasquale, he was out there in uh, South Lake. He's uh, in charge of free motion. Anyways, on a run, that question was presented to me. And in his, something I'll never forget when he said, don't be that fitness, if you will, entrepreneur or that personal trainer or that gym owner that wants to be it all. Such as, for example, the guy who you know coaches and teaches for the fitness competitors, the guy who teaches the long distance runners, the guy who's doing powerlifting, find your niche and expert off of that. And for me was, as I said earlier, was really focusing on the adults, feeling better, and then at the same time, I have much more uh, adults running. So, is there anything else, Josh, that you would like to give advice-wise, wisdom-wise? To, to me, to Jess, to anybody <laughs> listening to this <laughs> that comes to mind or heart. You know, never stop chasing your dreams, honestly. This has always been a dream of mine to own my own gym. And here we are, um, three years into it, and it, it's only getting better. So if, any advice, never stop, never. There are going to be moments, there are going to be times when it gets difficult and you look in the mirror like, oh, what am I doing? But keep pushing, keep pushing, and you will succeed. If you guys enjoyed this episode with Josh, please let me know down in the comments. Give it a thumbs up. I'm going to tag him in the description. So go and check his Instagram out. Check out his gym. Um, follow this man. He is extremely inspirational. I didn't actually know a lot about this about him. I've known him for a long time, but he's a very inspirational guy. I've known him and his wife, Jess, for a little bit. Um, great people. And uh, yeah, so if you guys didn't check out the last episode, please go check that out. The link will be in the description below. And until next time, I'll see you guys on this side. Thanks, bud. Thanks, man. That was awesome. Thank you, bro.